So good morning again, everybody, and thank you for uh, getting up early to come and uh, uh, listen to us and chat to us about data protection matters. Um, not the sort of thing you'd expect everyone to rise early to listen to, but it's a very hot topic today. Um, the Data Protection Act has been around for many, many years. It actually goes back to 1984. Um, uh, very well known a year for other things, and has been largely unchanged since then, although there was a new act in 98. Uh, it's been pretty much the same ever since those days, and that's despite everything that's happened since then. So the Data Protection Act predates everything that we take for granted today, mainstream internet, mobile, social, uh, big data, and all of those things um, the Data Protection Act didn't properly address. It's been a long way to uh, developing the GDPR. It's been uh, discussed for many years at European level. Uh, so on the slide, you can see that it's been a long road to this report reform. It's been probably the most hotly debated piece of new legislation um, in Europe. And it was finally agreed last May, uh, last year. And uh, there was a two-year run-in uh, period for people to get up to speed uh, so that they can be compliant with it by the time it comes into force in May uh, 2018. It's only 316 working days uh, before the GDPR comes into force. So, sounds like maybe a long time, but actually uh, we all know it's going to go very quickly. Uh, it's big, it's very long, it's very detailed. There's over 170 recitals uh, before you get into the main regulation. The regulation itself is 55,000 words. It's a massive piece of legislation, packed with lots of detail, written, unfortunately, in a sort of Euro-speak uh, fashion, which makes it quite difficult to interpret and apply, uh, particularly looking at it through English law eyes. Why uh, is it a regulation when most things that come through Europe are called um, a directive? Uh, well, the difference between a regulation and a directive is that the regulation uh, will take automatic effect. It doesn't need any implementing legislation. So we don't need to go through a bill and, a, and an act. Um, we won't have a General Data Protection Act. The regulation will come into force automatically in the UK in May 2018. We'll come on and talk about Brexit in a minute. So, well, data protection used to be one of those subjects that uh, we wouldn't speak a lot about. Data protection lawyers would sort of tend to skulk around in the shadows a little bit, not get out too much. Uh, but now, uh, everyone's very much in the headlight. Uh, it's very much a hot topic. Today's business world is very much about data assets. Uh, the headlines are filled with stories of data security breaches and the significant damage that can, that can lead to. And so, therefore, businesses appreciate uh, the value and importance of data and compliance even more so than ever before. So those who are involved with looking after data assets have a lot to think about at the moment. We've got, apart from GDPR readiness, which we're going to talk about today, uh, we've got all the data security issues, data security breaches happening all the time in the headlines. We've got the trouble with um, Safe Harbor that happened in 20, back end of 2015 uh, for transfers to the United States when Safe Harbor that many organizations had relied on for many years to transfer data uh, to the United States was found invalid by the European court and that threw everything up in the air. How are we going to do, deal with that? Uh, we've also got, um, so now there's a new uh, scheme called Privacy Shield. Uh, we've of course also got Brexit issues to think about and in parallel with the GDPR, we've got a new uh, e-privacy directive, which relates to uh, it's a separate regulation on e-marketing. And so it covers um, things like cookies and tracking devices and um, e-marketing, email marketing and the like. That's going to come in, uh, or is expected to come in, at around the same time as the GDPR. Uh, it's a slight update to the existing regulation, and will carry over the same uh, enforcement regime as the GDPR, particularly uh, in relation to fines. So uh, I'm not going to harp on about fines, we'll come back to that, but because of uh, all of that I've just mentioned, 
uh, it's now the case that implementation of GDPR is a matter for uh, boards of companies. G uh, data protection is no longer an issue just for the techies in the IT department or for a few keen people in marketing. <coughs> uh, it is now a board level imperative uh, for everyone to be involved in across all uh, uh, areas of the business. Quick overview of the topics that we're going to be looking at uh, this morning. Obviously, in the fairly short space of time that we have together, we're not going to cover everything. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of detail, but we're going to try and pick up what, are, what we see as the main themes and the main changes um, from the current situation. Uh, fortunately, or, or not as the case may be, we're, there are a lot of uh, areas of the GDPR which are similar to the existing Data Protection Act. So some of the concepts uh, that, that, are, that are in the new legislation are very familiar. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of new ideas uh, in the legislation, and there is much more onerous and detailed obligations than in the existing Data Protection Act. There are also problems with um, interpretation, because a lot of the language of the Act is quite woolly, uh, and uh, we have expressions like large scale or um, risk and high risk, uh, that have to be interpreted in different situations, which makes it quite difficult to know exactly what you need to do in one situation or another. Um, and as a result of that, uh, making certain decisions can be quite difficult. And against the backdrop of the potential fines and getting it wrong, um, these things are not for the faint-hearted. But having said all that, uh, it is an opportunity uh, between now and May 2018 to look again at how we uh, deal with data generally across an organization. Uh, make sure that we uh, look at it again in light of the regulation, but look at it from a business point of view as well. Don't necessarily get bogged down in the detail of the legals. Uh, what are the best practices? How can we improve best practices and um, secure the organization against risk for the future? So it's a good opportunity to sort of do all of that housekeeping. So I mentioned Brexit, and let's deal with that right up front, because uh, it's a sort of bit of an elephant in the room. What is the um, position with Brexit when we get to it with GDPR? Many people are saying, well, of course, once we leave Europe, uh, this is no longer going to be applicable, so why do we need to bother? Uh, well, a number of reasons why we do need to bother. First of all, um, come May 2018, we're going to still, in all probability, still be in Europe, and so it's going to come in all into effect automatically. Uh, second, even when we're outside Europe, uh, as Laura will mention in a moment, the, uh, the GDPR has long-arm jurisdiction. So for organizations outside Europe, they can be, it can be directly applicable if you're addressing the market inside Europe. So it could be directly applicable to you anyway. Uh, and thirdly, and probably most importantly, the UK, when it's no longer part of Europe, will need to trade and exchange data with Europe, and therefore uh, we have to find a safe mechanism um, to do that, and we have to be deemed in some way by Europe as having adequate protection for data, otherwise they won't allow data to come to the UK. And depending on the Brexit model that's adopted, uh, we will have to have laws that approximate the European laws. And the government has already said that we will be implementing the GDPR. We may at some point come back and look at the detail of it and try and backtrack on some of the bits they didn't like. Uh, but in large measure, the main points about the GDPR will come into force in May 2018 and will continue uh, beyond that. And so the ICO has recommended that organizations don't waste time uh, worrying about that and they get on with implementation of the GDPR. Mm -hmm.